good evening and very warm welcome to everyone present in this call along with me i have mr shailesh mahendale our cfo and mr dinesh nahar general manager finance and sga our investor relations advisors hope you all have received our investor deck by now for those who have not you can view them on the stock exchanges and the company website i'll give you some background we specialize in marketing and distribution of wide range of agrochemical products that is herbicides insecticides fungicides and biocides catering to the diverse global customer base we prepare comprehensive dossiers and seek registration of our products in our own name we allocate substantial resources and establish our foothold in the markets our total product registration stood at 2901 as on 31st december 2023 additionally 1075 applications for product registrations globally are at different stages of approval the capex for the last 9 months of fy24 stood at rupees 276 crores for the full year we expect the capex in the range of 352 to 400 crores for q124 the revenues have got reduced from rupees 1017 1017 crores to rupees 632 crores we have seen a volume reduction of approximately 20% year on year on our products volumes of agrochemicals reduced by 21% year on year and volume of non agrochemicals reduced by 16% year on year revenues got reduced mainly due to weaker demand because of drought season in europe and adverse weather conditions in nafta region also there has been lower product price realization across all the regions gross margins have got reduced from 30.5% to 26.2% in q3 of financial year 2024 the finished good prices have also reduced substantially we have done stock revaluation re as our accounting policy and that has impacted our gross profit and profitability to the tune of 7 crores in qy fy24 and rupees 91 crores in the 9 months of fy24 the company is seeing an improving trend in q4 fy24 with this brief review overview i would now like to hand over the call to our cfo mr sailesh mahendale for discussing our financial performance thank you everybody over to you mr sailesh mahendale yeah thank you sir good evening good evening everyone coming to quarter 3 financial 24 performance revenue stood at rupees 632 crores in quarter 3 fy24 versus 1017 crores in quarter 3 fy23 is a reduction of 38% year on year coming to the split agrochemical business reduced by 40% year on year to 508 crores whereas the non agrochemical business reduced by 29% year on year to 1 rupees 124 crores gross margin stood at 26.2% in quarter 3 financial 24 as against 30.5% in quarter 3 financial 23 the finished goods prices have also reduced substantially we have done stock revaluation as per accounting policy and that has impacted our gp and profitability to the tune of rupees 7 crores in quarter 3 fy24 ebitda stood at rupees 47 crores in q3 fy24 which is mainly due to the decline in the gross margins and increased other expenses which are relating to strengthening of our global workforce to support future growth pat for the quarter stood at rupees 4.6 crores 
coming to 9 month financial perform 24 financial performance revenue stood at rupees 1851 crores in 9 month fy24 versus rupees 2563 crores in 9 month fy23 a reduction of 28% year on year coming to the split agrochemical business reduced by 30% year on year to rupees 1424 crores whereas the non agrochemical business reduced by 20% year on year to rupees 427 crores gross margin stood at rupees gross margin stood at 19.8% in 9 months fy24 as against 28% in 9 months fy23 we have done stock revaluation as per accounting policy and that has impacted our gp and profitability to the tune of rupees 91 crores in 9 months fy24 ebitda stood at 9 rupees 19 crores whereas fat level reported loss of rupees 112 crores for fy 9 months fy24 working capital days as on 31st december 2023 stands at 131 days we remain debt free company and holding cash and cash equivalent of rupees 370 crores as on 31st december 23 the company is seeing an improving trend in quarter 4 of fy24 thank you we can now open the floor for questions and answers thank you thank you very much we will now begin with the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles thank you we take the first question from the line of viraj from simpl please go ahead sir Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, first is, you know, if you can just probably give uh, the figure for sales return uh, in the nine months, twenty twenty four, and for the quarter. And uh, one minute, sir. May I know your good name? Viraj. Mr. Viraj, your voice is getting uh, uh, cut in between, and also uh, it's not loud enough. So can you speak a little louder? And maybe bring the handphone closer to your mouth. Sure. So, can you give me the sales return figure for the first nine months and for the quarter? And second question is, you know, in other expenses, you talked about higher investment in global workforce. Uh, but you know, when you look at our own employee costs, you know, it's hardly one to two percent of our pay. So, what is driving this higher expenses? You know. for last few quarters for us so uh one minute the sales return figures are this uh mr viraj the sales return figures are not readily available so we'll be able to provide it later sure sir and employee cost One minute. See, we have expenses. We don't have the employee cost so much, but we engage uh, more than 300 people outside India, and all those people are working with us as a consultants. Instead of having employee-employee relationship. they are consultant and client relationship so uh, client uh, consultancy charges have gone up by almost uh, 18 and 1/2% uh, year on year similarly professional charges have gone up by 48.2% business development expenses are also uh, professional and marketing expenses of the consultants that has gone up by 26% service charges have gone up by 46% and uh, total these expenses have gone up by 24.45% all the expenses that that i have mentioned if they are put together okay and with this rate of 
इन्वेस्टमेंट वुड कंटिन्यू इन द पी एन एल और रेट ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द रजिस्ट्रेशन यस मिस्टर विराज इट विल कंटिन्यू बिकॉज इट इज नॉट अ वन टाइम प्रोसेस इफ वी टेक अप एनी प्रोडक्ट फॉर रजिस्ट्रेशन देन द प्रोसेस ऑफ रजिस्ट्रेशन लास्ट मे बी टू थ्री फोर इवन फाइव सिक्स सेवन ईयर्स यू कैन नॉट स्टॉप दैम इन बिटवीन एंड दिस इज द बैकबोन ऑफ आवर बिजनेस मॉडल वी इन ऑर्डर टू गेट एंट्री इन टू द मार्केट वी हैव टू हैव लॉट ऑफ रजिस्ट्रेशन you cannot market any of agrochemical products in any country without having the registration of that product and that formulation of the same molecule in that country so if you have to stay in business we have to continue continuously uh, continuing the uh, investment in this registration processes which is our capital expenditure thank you no, uh, what i was what i was asking was the rate of growth in some of these expenses like the consultancy and you know the service charges the business development will that the rate of growth would largely continue in coming years as well or this is like more of a one time you know yes, sir, uh, at least the registration rate. cost yeah. the rate of growth will increase because the process of registration is becoming more expensive more difficult and more time consuming Mm-hmm. as far as the other costs are concerned they would be i mean the uh, increase will not be very much it could be also uh, controlled to on the lower side it depends okay second question was on the competitive dynamics right now if you look at say this particular quarter we had seen a volume big growth of somewhere around 21 22% now if you look at the uh, actions of some of the larger chinese players say you know there's a player called rainbow and there are similar ones in last one year alone some of these guys have acquired uh say plus 1100 registrations you know each player uh so and they are looking to increase that pace of registration acquisition to participate in a lot of generic molecule uh play you know uh, as against being a manufacturer so for some of these uh, major markets which we cater to if you can give any color in terms of how the competitive dynamics uh you know has played out so this growth the growth of 20% is more driven by end market demand as being lower or you see and competition dynamics also changing no sir this degrowth has nothing to do with the registration costs the degrowth is mainly because of the reduction in the prices of these products mainly the reduction in the prices of same products you know in some products the prices have gone down to about 25% of what was prevailing uh, one year back you know so the degrowth is mainly on account of the this reduction in the prices no sir what i'm asking is this degrowth of 20% in volume which you've seen in quarter 3 uh, is it also driven by an increase in competition so has there been any market share loss or change in market share in the major markets which we cater to or it's more driven by end market mean this says the the main reason is the degrowth of the market itself uh because of the adverse weather drought in european region and uh, complicated weather in the united states it is only because of these factors okay just one last question i'll come to you you know if you look at the working capital again right uh, we see a very sharp increase both in receivables and inventory so do we see any risk of further provision either for bad debts or for inventory write offs you know in coming quarters no i don't foresee any provision for these things these uh, working capital uh, has gone up mainly because of uh, poor sales on on a, by, by our customers uh, and that is the responsible uh, that is because of adverse weather and drought situation in many important countries but this is not likely to continue uh, year after year okay come back in queue thank you thank you sir we take the next question from the line of rohit nagaraj from centrum broking please go ahead sir yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, am i audible sir hello hello am i audible sir Yes, you are audible, Mr. Nagaraj. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. The first question is uh, on the uh, supplies from China. So we've been hearing during the entire 2023 and your comments also that there have been uh, significant supplies which have come from China. So what is your assessment uh, currently in terms of whether the supply has alleviated or uh, the momentum is still continuing? And a general understanding of inventory situation across uh, different regions of your operation. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rohit, the situation in China continues to be the same. All the manufacturers are sitting with huge inventories. Some of them have reduced their production. Some of them have closed the plants with who had more than uh, six, seven plants. But they are still, uh, the inventory level is still continuing to be very high and very uncomfortable for the entire world. Right. What was the next, and, second part of your question? Uh, so the inventory situation across different markets, what we hear is Latin America still has a lot of generic inventory. So your uh, understanding of uh, the same. Mr. Rohit, these are not available as in public domain. It's very difficult to uh, make an assessment and it does not help us in our business model. We can only tell you that there are inventories also in the pipeline and also in the destination countries. Sure, sure. that's helpful. Uh, the second question is in terms of the Red Sea issue and the freight cost which has uh, jumped almost uh, to a create from uh, China to the European region. So, what is uh, your uh, understanding whether there will be a significant impact during Q4 uh, in terms of the uh, freight cost for us, given that uh, we will be supplying, uh, we are originating our material from China and supplying into different geographies? Thank you. Uh, sir, it is just the beginning of the Red Sea disturbance. Uh, the freight rates have already gone up more than three times, but uh, it has not made any significant contribution into our business because uh, this is not the correct period for us to make uh, excessive shipments, you know. Most of our goods have already been uh, transported to the destinations, so Sharda crop cam is not so much affected, but uh, I cannot comment about uh, the entire industry. Sure, sure. Uh, this is helpful, sir. Uh, thanks a lot and uh, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Preet Malde from Centra Insights. Please go ahead. Can you please pronounce the name a little more clearly and louder? It's Preet Malde, sir. Please go ahead, sir. No, your voice is uh, again got subdued. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. This is Preet Malde over here. Malde? Preet, yeah. Preet Maldev. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I have a few questions regarding the registration cost. Uh, Mr. Maldev, which company do you represent? Uh, Centra Insights. Which one? Centra Insights. Centra Insights. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I I understand that the registration costs have been going up significantly. Uh, historically, we have been able to maintain uh, more than 20-25% ROCE levels. So, what can we expect from now on? We, we have been uh, to maintain 20-25% ROCE levels and uh, around 5 to 6 times asset turnover. So, what can we expect now? Sir, we think that the same rates will continue. As and, as and when these uh, registration costs are becoming more expensive, it is also becoming prohibitive for the competition. So, mm -hmm. this trend will continue. Okay. Uh, and uh, do we see the prices coming back to normalcy in any like, the near future, in the next quarter or in the next year? What is, what is the guidance that you can give? See, I am not an astrologist. I can only give you a, a little comment. In the near future, no, but uh, within a year, I, I am uh, quite hopeful that they'll go up. Uh, within the next year? Yes. Okay. And our uh, cap guidance for 350 to 400 crores remains the same, right? It may remain the same or it may even go up. It may even go up. So I, I actually want to understand uh, if the registration costs are going up, 
uh, what um, how 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 much have the registration costs gone up since the last year if you can give a number and percentage sir as i explained you this is not year on year one process uh, registration takes 5 6 7 years so i can only tell you that the requirement of the authorities is going up year after year the data they require and the details they require are also going up very much but this is very arbitrary there is no hard and fast uh, rule or uh, trend or practice on this field so it's very difficult for us to comment okay okay so our uh, turnover ratios and uh, profitability ratios won't be affected so much because it is uh, going up for the whole industry yes please okay okay thank you so much that's it from my side thank you sir the next question is from the line of himanshu upadhyay from o3 pms please go ahead sir yeah hi uh, good evening uh, my first question is uh, last time when we met we said that the our major focus is on getting the receivables back okay our collection is the priority for us and right now also if we see the receivables remain high only or they have increased can you give some analysis on receivable days and how much would be pending for more than 6 months and is uh, it still the highest priority or you think the payments and everything have started uh, smoothing out sir i don't recollect i said that this is our highest priority because receivables have been our priority all throughout but i don't think i have ever used the word highest it will continue to be uh, our priority and it's very normal okay okay and uh, when you say that uh, the market situation is improving in the starting comment is it you are saying that the demand is improving or you are saying the prices have stabilized or you are saying both the things are uh, improving uh, can you repeat your question once again mr upadhyay you said that market situation is improving okay in the initial comments okay yes is it, is it because of demand side you are improve seeing an improvement or the prices have stabilized and hence uh, you are saying the situation is uh, improving or both have started improving any sir normal i mean present scenario price is not uh, a big incentive because everybody is having enough stock and when i say improving i said it is improving but the speed uh, the speed of improvement is also very small it has not picked up in a big way it is improving because many chinese factories have stopped their production they cannot afford to hold the uh, stock for such a long period it's a big, big strain on their uh, finances so the productions have gone down but availability still continues to be in abundance and at the final uh, means uh, distributor end okay in uh, nafta and uh, europe and uh, latin still the inventories are very high do you think uh, the situation very has what? improved the inventories that the no mr uh, padhyay these figures are not available in public domain it is anybody's guess all i can tell you is that the inventories are there and the enthusiasm of the distributors or uh, the customers is lacking earlier the distributors and uh, customers used to be very anxious to build up the stock and inventory but at least in this year they are delaying the decision of purchasing because they feel that the inventory situation is very comfortable and they don't feel very anxious or uh, nervous of not getting the products and uh, one thing na uh, we stated why we are not at present in india it is because the payment terms are not very great in india okay and outside india the payment terms are much better okay i i did, can you repeat your question please no uh, one of the earlier transcripts we have stated that uh, why we have not focused on india was because the payment terms are not very great okay the payment uh, gets generally very delayed from the distribution side okay but if you look at i made this uh, statement as bluntly as you are quoting me 
uh, main reason for our not being present in India is the registrations. In India, the manufacturers are the registration holders also, and we don't have our own manufacturing. So even if we get the registration, we have to depend upon the manufacturer who themselves are also marketing the same product in the same market. So that is why the Indian market doesn't uh, fit into our business model. We are an asset light company and we outsource everything. That model does not work in India when there are so many manufacturers present in India for most of the products. Thank you. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Bhavya Gandhi from the Lal and Rocha Stop Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, please. Yeah, just wanted to know what has led to the growth in insecticides as a segment because that has grown 21% vis-a-vis -vis herbicides and fungicides. Is it due to some specific region or better placements if you can just help on that front? Sir, it has grown up, but in the absolute terms, the growth is not so much. From 97 to 118 uh, crores, and there is no specific reason. It all depends upon the cropping pattern and the climates. In general, the insecticides have a, a bigger demand in tropical countries. In the cooler countries, the insecticides have very less demand. So we have not uh, spent our energy in trying to analyze, but I don't think it has any specific reason. It's just normal. It happens. Okay, got it. And also with your experience uh, in agrochem over the years, just wanted to know whenever this restocking happens, is it like a steep recovery or is it like a gradual recovery where, uh, you know, distributors start restocking? I mean, uh, if we want to, you know, model our numbers, is it like next year could be a sudden bounce uh, back or uh, is it going to be a gradual recovery year on? I think it is going to be a gradual recovery. There is not going to be steep or all of a sudden big demand. Okay, got it. And also just wanted to know what is the amortization policy with respect to registration? For the newer registrations, like what, what sort of policy, how, I mean, uh, across, uh, for how many years we amortize our registrations? You can throw some light on that. See, we amortize our capital assets over a period of five years. And that has been the practice right from beginning. And it continues to be the remain the same even at present. Okay. And also from an end demand consumer standpoint, just wanted to know how is the sentiment? Is it like the end demand is also still getting affected or is it only because of the channel inventory we are facing demand issues? Sir, nobody is excited in this our market today. Everybody is suffering. Even the end user who had purchased the product six months back is nervous because the current prices are much lower than what the inventory he has. So there is no excitement among anybody about the demand. Okay. Got it. And just one last question. Wanted to understand whenever we supply to NAFTA Europe, is it to third party distributors or is it to our own distributors? Uh, like what is the business model if you can throw some light on that? Mr. Gandhi, none of the distributors are owned by us. They are all independent players and uh, they act in their own way, seeing the circumstances, the market dynamics and they take a decision. We don't own or we don't have anything like a own distributor. Many of our distributors are also distributing for the multinational companies and innovators. Got it, got it, got it. Fair enough. And just one more thing, uh, Chinese players who are the manufacturers of our product, do they also have their own registrations in the market that they come, I mean, we supply? No, sir. Normally, a manufacturer is not interested in registrations. He feels that his capital would uh, be much better if he invests into tangible assets, which he can see, even sell at the time of need. Intangible assets are uh, not very exciting and interesting for a manufacturer. Oh, if God. he has extra capital, he'll like to put up another plant or increase the capacity of his plant rather than investing in funds into invisible and intangible registration assets. 
dotted and with the with a surplus Sorry, cash that we have we may be requested sir you have put too many questions sure sure thank you We take the next question from the line of Mr. Thruv Mucha from HDFC AMC. Please go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Namaskar, sir. Sir, ye for 3Q, uh, you gave volume was for agrochemical division was down 21 percent. Why? Why? What is price and uh, FX? One minute. You talk about agrochemicals or uh, both yeah. put together? For just agrochemicals, sir. Yeah, agrochemicals. Yeah. Sir, we don't have figure for agrochemicals. We have uh, ag uh, figures for the uh, in both both the things. A uh, total company. Okay, uh, FX impact has been plus 2.3 percent. Volume has uh, contributed to minus 20.8 percent. And uh, like price that. and product mix. has impacted by 19.4% overall growth has been uh, going down with almost 38% sir so the other thing was uh, so last time you had mentioned that uh, anything in the previous or uh, the call prior to that that uh, some of the distributors in north america are saying that uh, take away the inventory or give some extended credit period So is that situation over now? Whatever that situation was, is that over or still it continues? Sir, please repeat your question. It was little. Uh, there was some small problem with the voice. Yes. Can you repeat your question once again? Yes. Yeah. So I was saying that uh, in the prior calls you had mentioned that in distributors in North America, uh, where uh, you know because of the pr lower prices, we're saying that you either take the inventory or give us some discounts. So is that situation over, or I mean, still that situation? I mean, still it continues in 3Q and 4Q also. No, sir. That situation was very unique situation when the prices dropped significantly in a period of time. Now everybody has got used to it. Nobody is buying in big quantities, and also the decline in price has gone down considerably. Hmm. Okay. 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 And the last question is, what would be a net cash flow by the end of net cash or net debt by the end of the fight uh, by December end? You said uh, this the end of Q3 or uh, you said next year? Q3, Q3, sir, Q3. Uh, net cash uh, at the end of Q3 is rupees 370 crores. Sure, sir. Uh, great, sir. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gokul Maheshwari from Auriga Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, am I audible? Speak a little louder, sir. Yes. Uh, I am. <clears throat> uh, is this okay? Uh, no, it is okay. Okay. Thank you. So, Bhuvanji, you mentioned two important things. One is. that the inventory in china on the manufacturing side continues to remain elevated and on the other side you are mentioning that you are hopeful of uh, price increases possibly coming in this year now two questions based on that um, i mean if there is a lot of inventory yet where do you i mean one day what we have to see is that a lot of production has to go out of the system which you did allude to Uh, so can you uh, uh, talk? Uh, can you just highlight any point on regarding that, sir? I thought you. I mean, your question has been a little longer, and I thought you had provided answer also to the questions uh, yourself. Can you be a little more brief and uh, yes, specific about okay. your question, sir? Yes. So no, because I was a little confused that one day we are saying there is a lot of inventory in the system. And one day yes. we are a bit hopeful of price increases. So where? Pardon me. No, no. Can you repeat the last sentence again? Yes. Sorry, I'll repeat myself. The second part I was saying is that somewhere when someone raised a question about price increases, and you did mention that we are hopeful those prices in price increases come through in a, within a year. But if yes. we have a lot of inventory in the system, where do you see that hope coming from for the prices increases to happen? Sir, as I also mentioned, the Chinese uh, production capacities have been reduced by the manufacturers voluntarily, and uh, that means the addition to the inventories is going to be less, 
and whatever demand uh, is uh, catered to our uh, supplies, the inventory level will go down, and this will contribute to slight improvement in the prices, because everybody is suffering and everybody is eager and uh, doing his best to get a better realization, better prices. Okay, so I think the net net in a way what you're saying is that with a certain level of price increases, that inventory can get absorbed in the system. Yes, it's a natural phenomenon. Okay. Yes. Okay, I think that answers my question. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Rohan Gupta from Nuwama. Please go ahead, sir. Bhumnari, hi, sir. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Uh, sir, the first question is on our uh, increased working capital of both inventory as well as data has gone up compared to last year. While the focus was on collection and reducing the inventory, but it has still gone up. So it is very muted demand scenario which has impacted this, uh, or we had just increased the inventory. to benefit from the expected price rise maybe in future or data are not paying I and mean, is that driven by that reason no sir uh, now you can you repeat you said you put your question in three parts what i feel in general is that the first part is right second and part third parts are not right but if you can repeat i can answer you specifically each part and then wait for my answer so sir What was the reason for increase in inventory? The reason for increase in inventory is slow receipt of the payments and uh, inventory which was uh, returned back to us by our customers. We have not added to the involuntarily we have not uh, created those inventories. These inventories got created because of the return by the customers who could not sell their products. And the second is then what was the reason for increase in data? Increase in the data. One minute. Is there an increase in the data? In absolute terms, it's reduced. In absolute terms, mm -hmm. it is reduced from one thousand eight hundred thirty-three crore to eight eighty-nine crore. Rohan ji, you will be surprised, pleasantly surprised. Our data have reduced from one thousand eight hundred and thirty crores to rupees eight hundred and ninety crores. So almost fifty percent. Okay. Between March twenty three and December twenty three. So we are comparing four month period with uh, four uh, quarters and three quarters. Uh, last quarter our sales are also very high. So that is one of the reasons. I don't have ready figure for December twenty two for the data. But there is no significant increase in the data, sir. Sir, if I understand our business model right, then we have always and we should always be beneficiary when the prices fall of the raw material because we don't manufacture anything; we just buy from the market. This is the time when we have seen the maximum price fall has happened in China, but. on the contrary where we should have gained in the current environment we still posted weak margin and losses and also have to give probably higher discount to the customers to collect the payment so sir is it this understanding probably about our business model then is wrong because even the raw material prices fall we won't benefit when the raw material prices will go up at that scenario also we won't benefit like how we have seen in the post pandemic environment when the prices were going up so sir there is seems to be some disconnect uh, in our business model just wanted to understand your thought process on that rohan ji your question has uh, consumed nearly 4 minutes i would answer all those questions very pleasantly if you break it down to one question and one answer and then second question and second answer so repeat your question part by part and wait for my answer sir so just want to understand in a falling raw material prices ideally we should have benefited i will answer this yes
Sir, our inventory has increased not because of our voluntary purchases. Our inventory has increased because our customers were very enthusiastic almost one and a half years ago to build up the inventory because they had passed through the COVID situation where the material was not available to them as per their demand. So they built up, uh, they ordered and by the time the goods were delivered to them, there was a steep decrease in the prices. So they returned the goods to us and in spite of fighting them with them and the legal questions and uh, ruining our relations, we and we, following the trend of the market, we gracefully accepted the goods back because they were supplied to them on credit. And they said, if you uh, don't take it back, we will not be able to pay you. So our inventory got built up involuntarily because of return of huge amount of goods by our, our customers. Now come to the next part of your question. So sir, when the prices, raw material prices now have started going up, are you expecting that they, at least they will not fall and over next one year, because Chinese supply is coming down, so they may go up. Do you think that we will go back to the previous level margin, sir, at gross level? Sir, this is the, that's the what we hope. But I want to tell you, our inventory levels will also go down because we will sell to our customers from the inventory we already have. Our purchases from China has got reduced considerably because uh, there is no fresh demand. Third question, first, third part of your question, Rohanji. No, sir. I think that answers both the questions. So thank you very thank much you for, for, uh, thank for you, answering so patiently, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Manav Kapasi from BNK Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yeah, you have to speak a little more louder. Okay, so uh, last quarter, sir, you had given cross margin breakup region wise as well as uh, agrochemical region wise volume. So, if you can help us with this quarter number, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, region wise, yeah. our, uh, what is this? Gross margin. Gross margins. Yes, gross margin, sir. Gross margin, you want in quarter 3 or 9 months ended uh, quarter 3? Quarter 3 FY24, just for the quarter, sir. Quarter 3, okay. Our gross margin in Europe has come down from 37.7% to 36.4% very marginal drop. Okay. In Latin America, the gross margins have gone up from 24% to 31%. Okay. In NAFTA, gross margins have gone down from 27% to 12%. This is the region which has been very badly hit us and this is the uh, contribution to high inventories and very poor margins. And okay. gross margin in rest of the world has stayed stable 25% to 25%. Okay. And uh, volume breakup uh, region wise for agrochemicals? One minute. Sir, I appreciate these questions. Very intelligent questions. Uh, volumes. In Europe, the volumes have gone down from 3,000 300 to 2850 minus 13%. Okay. In Latin America, the volumes have gone up from 422 to 503, an increase of 19.3%. NAFTA region, the Volumes have gone down considerably from 5,000 to 3,250, amounting to 35.3% negative. Rest of the world, the volumes have gone up from 1,055 to 1,105, almost 5% increase. Overall, the 
volumes have gone down by 21 percent. Put all the four regions together. Okay, understood. Thank you so much, sir, and all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Viraj from SIMPL. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Hey, am I audible? No, sir. You have to speak a little louder. Doctor, just a couple of questions. Uh, one is a little clarification on the cash part. Uh, you know, you said the debtors have reduced from 1830 to 890 crores. So it's almost 90 crores reduction in data uh, in last nine months. Uh, but I, you know, I, I, yeah, from like nine months, yeah, you are right. But our overall cash component has just increased from say 323 to 370. So is then it maybe we have to look at the inventory? Uh, yeah, I was asking on that. Yeah, and receivables. These are the two three factors which led to led to the uh, cash reserves. No, receivables have you said that it's already reduced by almost 950 crores. So, is the major part of that is in inventory, right? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, just a couple of questions on the non act and business. Uh, you know, if you look at this space, right, it's a, uh, this is its primary convenor belt, you know, for us. And well, I'm not uh, able to understand. Please speak a little louder and slowly. Yeah. So, if you see the business, right, it's majorly conveyor belts is the product which Maybe we cater to. Okay, non-agro business. Yes. So, can you give some perspective on what is driving growth in this business for us? Uh, because the market is a, you know, you have, you have seen an industry which is a multi-billion dollar industry and you know, you know, unless there is a consistency in terms of supply and uh, good credentials in terms of manufacturing, uh, companies usually they don't entertain, you know, new suppliers. So for us, what is driving this growth in this business? Sir, I can only say one thing. Service, quality, and uh, transparency. And at the same time, we don't have a very big share of the world market. We may not be having more than 10% of the world market, so a small, in, uh, a significant increase in our uh, company's uh, market contributes to a very small uh, part to the world market. So if you do understand the mix in that business, say between replacement versus new projects, uh, you know, how would that mix be like? I cannot comment on this. I have not looked into it from that uh, angle. Okay, but generally is it more of a replacement driven business or is it more of a no, project driven business? Or? Demands are replacements. Uh, sorry sir, I didn't hear that. Most of our demand is coming from resellers, distributors in that particular region. We do not have any access to the end users. Okay. And just one more question on this. You know, if you look at the margin in this business, you know, in last 10 years, we've been earning around 17% operating margin. And in last nine months, we've earned 24% operating margin. So what is driving such a high margin for us? And why, you know, if a manufacturer sees this kind of a margin, then... Uh, what stops them from entering in this, you know, for the, in, into the end market? Because unlike ACCAM, there is no registration required here. Sir, this business is purely service oriented. If you supply the customer quality goods in time, the customer becomes good friend and he comes to us again and again. I can only say maybe our competitors are not so efficient or so uh, competent to give them the same service. That's the only thing I can say. Okay, and the thing is the magic in our hands to influence him or mesmerize him. But, okay, so the increase in margin also in the last nine months to say 24%, uh, what is that you know, driven by? Sir, pure uh, buying and selling uh, 
things with little uh, alertness and smartness. Okay. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for the day. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. R. V. Bubna for closing comments. Please go ahead, sir. Yes, madam. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I hope we have been able to answer all your queries. We look forward to such interactions in the future. We hope to meet your expectations in future too. In case you require any further details, you may contact us or Mr. Devan Dhruva from SGA, our investor relations partner. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Antic Stock Broking, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.